In a previous video we covered the E-75, the plan replacement tank for the King Tiger, and we briefly looked at the idea of the E-Tanks. The E-Series was an attempt by Nazi Germany to produce a standardised series of tank designs and military vehicles. This whole concept aimed to allow German tank production and manufacture to get significantly quicker. Previously German tank design was characterised by over-engineering and complex designs. Some regard these German World War II tanks as fantastic and superior, but ultimately the rate of production was too low and the tanks took too long to make. There were also issues with certain vehicles such as the King Tiger with its reliability, and the E-Series aimed to sort out these problems. In this video, we're going to take you through the projected E-Series of tanks and show you what they would have replaced. Remember if you do enjoy these videos, please support our channel by subscribing. So the standardised tanks planned by the E-Series would have been simpler, easier and cheaper to produce, but were significantly faster also to produce. One of the major criticisms of the German tank industry was that they couldn't match the rates of production that the Soviets had with the T-34 or that the Americans had with the Sherman. The E-Series offered slight tweaks and improvements in various areas of tank design such as armour and firepower, but these vehicles were fundamentally designed to replace other tanks. Ultimately the E-Series came too late in the war and the plan to create these vehicles would never really come to fruition, with the loss of the war for the Germans close by on the horizon. There were initially five E-Series that were designed, all of different weights and sizes to be used in different ways by the Wehrmacht. Firstly was the E-10. The project was initially planned to act as a replacement for the Jagdpanzer 38T, also known as the Hetzer. The Hetzer was a rather decent tank destroyer, which was made relatively cheaply by using the chassis from a Panzer 38T, which had been pinched from Czech factories. The E-10 design was aimed to replace the Hetzer and looks relatively similar in its designs and would have been built on this new chassis. Its weight would have belonged to the 10-25 to ton class and it would have used four Tiger II style but slightly enlarged all steel road wheels in an overlapping layout. It would have featured a much simpler suspension which would have improved the whole drive experience. Interestingly this new suspension would later be used on the Swiss Cold War tank, the Panzer 61. One rather different feature to the E-10 was the fact that it could lower the hull by placing the pivot points of the suspension units higher to the hull bottom. This would reduce the height of the vehicle from 176cm to 140 making it easier to conceal. This vehicle would also have been used to transport a new class of heavy anti-tank guns. The design would be abandoned however in favour of tweaking the Hetzer using German parts as opposed to Czech parts as these areas had begun to fall out the hands of the Third Reich. The next vehicle planned was the E-25, which was to be the replacement vehicle for all Panzer III and Panzer IV vehicles. The mass production of this tank would have been on a huge scale, with the sheer amount of Panzer III and Panzer IVs created. It was planned to involve many different parties such as Porsche, and it would have used many different roles. The E-25 would have been used as a medium recon vehicle, as a medium tank destroyer, and as a heavy Waffen Trager, the class of vehicle which was aimed to carry new anti-tank weapons. It would have used four of the Tiger II style road wheels per side, and would have also used an overlapping layout, similar to the E-10. Planned for the armament on board the E-25 was a 75mm Pac-42 L-70 gun, and possibly a machine gun, to be placed in a small turret. One of the strengths of this vehicle would have been its manoeuvrability, and also it had a rather low profile, which would have been easy to conceal and hard to spot for an enemy on the battlefield. Next up was the E-50 standard Panzer. Now this was intended to be a standard medium tank of the German army and would have replaced the infamous Panther and the notorious Tiger tanks. The E-50 hull would have been longer than the Panther and it was in size rather similar and almost identical to the Tiger II or King Tiger, except for its upper and lowest glasses plate layout. Now compared to the Tiger II, the E-50 would have been much simpler and quicker to create, reducing the time that it took therefore to get the tank out of the factory and onto the battlefield. A new turret would have also been designed for the E-50, however there aren't any drawings regarding the E-50 and E-75 turrets, and it's also hard to assess which armament would have been placed on board. The E-50 would have a weight between 50 and 75 tonnes, and featured an improved Maybach HL234 engine, which gave out 900 horsepower and allowed the vehicle to possibly make a max speed of 60 km an hour. The E-75 standard Panzer is a vehicle we've covered in another video, and it was ultimately planned to replace the brutal King Tiger. 
Now the King Tiger was extremely notorious and effective in terms of its armament, however it did have a fatal flaw regarding reliability. The E75 aimed to combat this and would have been built alongside the E50 for ease of manufacture for both vehicles and it would have shared components. It would have used the same Maybach engine as the E50 and would feature thicker armour than the Tiger II which would have made it a formidable foe. It would have weighed in at over 75 tonnes and would have a max speed of around 40 km an hour. Some sources state that the E75 would have been equipped with an 88mm L71 or L100 gun with an optical rangefinder which would have allowed tank crews to pick off vehicles at range. Some even argue that the vehicle could possibly even have accommodated a 105mm gun. The final vehicle in the E series is the most famous. The E100 was descended from the Tiger Mouse and was aimed to be a simpler version of the wonder weapon and colossal vehicle the Mouse. The E100 was to be a super heavy tank designed to replace the prototype only Porsche designed Mouse and development on this vehicle would start in 1944. Ultimately it would be abandoned after Hitler ordered an end to the work on the Mouse. With regards to completion, only the chassis was finished and it was taken back to the UK to be evaluated and was then scrapped. During the early stage of development, the E100 would have used a mouse turret and would have housed a 127mm KWK 44L55 gun. There was even a proposal allegedly for a 150mm KWK 44 gun to be mounted on the E100, so the Germans had huge plans for this vehicle. In terms of specs, it would use a crew of 6, have a max range of 160km and would have had a max speed on road of 24km an hour and it would have weighed in at a colossal 124 tonnes. Armour around the vehicle would have been sloped and extremely thick as well. Now the big issue for the Germans with regards to the E-Series was the fact that they came far too late in the war. If the decision had been made to create these standardised vehicles earlier in the conflict or even before, then the Germans could have had more success, however one must consider that these vehicles would have only inspired the enemies of Nazi Germany to innovate with their tank design. The E-Series as a whole seemed like a great idea, but ultimately was doomed by the fact that defeat for Germany at this time in the conflict seemed extremely close by and the industrial areas were already suffering greatly from Allied bombing. Who knows what would have happened with the E-Tanks, however imagine the size of the E-100 rolling over the horizon and it would have inspired a huge amount of fear in the enemy. I hope you've enjoyed this video. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Once again, thanks for watching.